Since 2004, Google has scanned over 25 million books and magazines, creating the online repository known as Google Books. Though most books are searchable, not every book is browsable. Copyright issues prevent Google from displaying the entirety of many works, despite the technical ability to search through them. Though you may not be able to read every page, the search and description features of Google Books still benefit scholars who can learn more about a work before ever picking it up off the shelf. When searching in Google Books, it's important to know what's actually being searched. Unlike a scholarly repository such as JSTOR, which contains journals selected by experts, Google Books aims for the bigger picture. It doesn't distinguish between books published by the University of Pennsylvania Press and works that are self-published. It cannot tell the difference between scholarly sources and popular magazines. Searching in Google Books means searching the full text of all 25 million plus works. This makes for an incredibly powerful keyword searching tool, but you must use your own knowledge of your field to determine the credibility and relevance of sources. For this example, we will be reading through criticism of Toni Morrison's Song of Solomon. A scholar interested in the southern setting of Song of Solomon might try this search, Song of Solomon, Toni Morrison, Southern Landscape. I've grouped Song of Solomon with quotation marks as a phrase, but left other keywords separate at first to explore serendipitous results. The first few results are clearly related to Morrison criticism, but what about this result, defining travel, diverse visions? When we enter the book, the keywords are highlighted, and we can see that the author uses Morrison to analyze how the figure of the ancestor functions in Southern American culture. It's an unexpected find, which might steer my research in new directions. The strong keyword searching capability of Google Books can also return false positives. Returning to the search, let's look at Who Set You Flowin?, the African American Migration Narrative. A quick search within suggests that the passages mentioning Southern Landscape refer to Richard Wright's work, not Toni Morrison's. Because of the scale of Google Books, you will often obtain better results if you search more narrowly, including exact strings where possible. Google Books is especially good at helping you find discussions of a particular passage or word in a text if you are looking for discussions of more obscure works. Google Books is equally helpful after a scholar has already compiled a list of books which may be useful to a given topic. Here, I've used Franklin to find essays about Song of Solomon. I also could have found them by using a database such as MLA, or in the footnotes of a book I had been reading. The second book in this list is African American Servitude and Historical Imaginings. Entering the catalog record for this book, Song of Solomon is included as a subject heading, but there's no contextual information to see why it is included. Let's try looking this item up in Google Books. The book opens with all keywords highlighted in the text. This feature can be turned off by clicking Clear Search on the upper right. You can also use the zoom icons to view more or less of the text on the screen. Scrolling to the top, we can see that this is only a preview, and that only some pages will be displayed. This often includes the table of contents. We can see the chapter about Song of Solomon in context with the other works in this book. We can then go directly to the chapter to get a preview. In this work, nearly the entire chapter has been digitized and made available for preview. With this kind of access, a scholar might not need to pull the book from the shelf. Most of the relevant information is readily available. Not all works in Google Books have as many pages open to scholars. Let's try another work from the list, Toni Morrison's Song of Solomon, edited by Harold Bloom. At first glance, the book appears to be available. After scrolling through the table of contents, a scholar searching for Morrison's connection with nature may be most interested in this one, Westbury's Toni Morrison's Revisionary Nature Writing. Unfortunately, the drop-down box has grayed out this portion of the book, meaning it's not available to browse. Still, there are other ways to peer into this work to see if it's relevant. Heading to the index, a scholar can look up keywords. Nature is discussed in several different ways in this book, and, according to the page numbers, nearly all within the chapter of interest. A full-text search can also lead to more clues about relevancy. Nature appears several times in this book, including in the chapter by Barry. By clicking on the page number, you can enter the chapter which had previously been forbidden to see the keyword in context. Barry's notes appear in another keyword in context selection, which may give leads about related works. So, even when you can't read most of a book, you can use a keyword search to serve as an index to the work, guiding you to the pages in which a concept or term is discussed. 
often a keyword search can be more useful than the index that is actually included in the book. If a book is completely unavailable, Google Books still provides important metadata, information about a work, including publisher information and links to reviews. However, because of the huge number of books included in Google Books, and because this metadata was often not compiled with the help of scholars, it can sometimes be inaccurate, especially with older works. Amazon and other book retailers have similar access to reviews and publisher information, so if you don't see your book listed in Google Books, try searching elsewhere. Google Books provides an incredible amount of access to works of fiction, nonfiction, magazines, and scholarly criticism, displaying previews of pages, chapters, and sometimes entire works. Scholars have long used book reviews to learn about a text before reading it, and Google Books is not a substitution for a well-written critical review. However, it's an essential time saver for scholars. It's a shortcut, which allows scholars to better know a text before reading it in full, both in terms of summary, in tables of contents, and reviews, and in detail through keyword search and page views. Consider searching Google Books as you compile and focus your research bibliography.